You joined politics after the death of your sister. How have you survived? Most people really don't understand or know their potential. Um, and that it's an opportunity that can make you know. So for me, the more I interacted, the more I realized I can do this thing. It's not that hard. It's not. And the, the soon, as soon as I was able to get past that, oh, somebody, some person abusing you, uh, somebody throwing very nasty comments, um, uh, throwing words in, in, in social media that sometimes you wonder whether they are talking about me. As soon as I was past that and, and I felt, you know, so what if they say what they were saying? I know me and, 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 and I know who I am. Then you realize, oh, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to, to spend sleepless nights wondering, oh, why are they abusing me? No, no, no. You just know that once you've offered yourself for a public office, then expect anything from anybody at any time. In 2013, in Parliament, you were elected as the first female deputy speaker with a majority vote round one. You are appealed <coughs> to both sides. What exactly was the secret that you used? When you sit on that chair as the speaker, I'm no longer a jubilee speaker or, 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 or any other speaker. I am the speaker of the National Assembly, therefore acting as the arbiter between these two, um, uh, the minorities and the, uh, and the majorities in parliament. I also realized that, um, you know, you don't just, things don't just come on, on your table. People lobby, people fight for space. There are times when I know that um, I have to cox my side of the coalition when I realize, because some matters are very, uh, are about our, 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 our party or our, um, you know, our coalition. But I don't be the one to bring it out. But I can cox somebody from my side to say, we are not, if you are not careful, we can lose this vote. And then, of course, now the right people can, can take over. So. This is the kind of um, a way of, 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 of really getting the trust of the people and believe that they get that confidence that you're going to be fair. The performance of that particular parliament has been questioned. In terms of performance, I think we have, uh, you know, a past record, uh, a record bills in this house. Um, and so when you say, what, 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 what do we judge a house by? It is how many bills that have been able to be passed. Remember that this is the parliament that was, you know, that is the first one uh, implementing the new constitution. Therefore, all of a sudden, numbers swelled. So alone on the, on the logistics and the infrastructure of, you know, incorporating another almost 200 members in the, in the assembly, of course, was going to uh, come with some of the, the challenges. Talking about <coughs> bills that you passed, and as a female deputy speaker, the two-third failed when you were there. This one element of the two-third gender bill, which has become elusive. Some people ask me, why do you want this bill? And yet you, you keep fighting for your space. You keep, you know, you, are, you want to, you, know, you came to be an MP, you, you, you stuck on the, you've stuck on being a member of parliament, you've not tried to go for the women rep position, now you are going for governor. But not everybody can go through that route. Not everybody has had that chance to know that it is possible to push. So, and not everybody also has the same, maybe, um, uh, cultural uh, acceptance. How has it been? Because they refer to you as the Lulu Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's always a, it's always a challenge. Uh, everybody um, now, everybody knows that I'm not buried in my community. Um, and so that has been the, the one thing that they have hopped on and hopped on and hopped on. But uh, I, li I really appreciate the people of, uh, of Bomet and starting with the people of Sotik who have given me twice, despite the very, very concerted effort to try and, 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 and you know, uh, depict me as somebody that is foreign, that is, that is not from, from within. As a cause of, of marriage, they don't want to know that I am their daughter. No one will ever ask a man about his wife. Nobody. You'll never, they, whether she came from mass or came from wherever. As deputy speaker, what would you say were your low moments? It's not been an easy house. Sometimes when matters come to the house that are highly controversial, <clears throat> 
it can be quite difficult um, trying to, to control the house. I guess one of the lowest ones was when the, uh, Gladys Wanga poured water uh, on me. And, um, but still, I took it in my stride. And I know that she was not pouring water on me because I am Joyce Laboso. She was pouring water on me because of the position that I was occupying at the time. We are now past that. My clothes have dried from the water that she has poured and we're moving on. It's, it wasn't personal. It was, uh, you know, in the heat of the moment. Although sometimes I hear her, you know, make uh, remarks like she's very proud of what she did. I, in my view, I think, if, I, if it was me, I would uh, I'd try as much as possible to hide that kind of a thing. Because in my view, that was, uh, that, that was not, especially doing that to a fellow woman, uh, to me, was a, a very wrong thing. And you shouldn't be, you shouldn't go out there, <laughs> you know, loading yourself. Oh, I look at me, I'm very special because I poured water on the deputy speaker. That... I don't think is, uh, is, it would be on for me. I want us now to shift to Bomet gubernatorial race. Uh, yes. Recently at a barrel in Chipalunga constituency, your supporters and those of your fierce rival <coughs> incumbent Isaac Ruto clashed. A clear indication that it is a heated race. Yes. Do you believe you have what it takes to unseat the incumbent? Yes, I have what it takes. My opponent I have no issues whatsoever with Isaac Ruto as an individual. In fact, I went to school with him in the university. We worked with him at Ejaton University. What I have issues with is his style of leadership. Abrasive, you know, uh, this, is, this is not the era of, of chest thumping. And, 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 you know, um, a kind of a know-it-all uh, kind of leadership. What people want is more consultations. We have not had any consultative meetings with our governor for the last five years. I think we had one meeting when we started in 2013. And that is it. He has run the show. I'm told the idea really is that um, they would like a situation where I don't get to speak. Because when I speak, the people listen to me. And when I speak, the people hear what I'm saying. So I would really like to tell my opponent that, um, you know, uh, politics is a game. It is a game like you are, have a game between Arsenal and Manu. There is going to be a winner. And uh, there is going to be a loser. I want to assure him that I am ready and prepared because I haven't come this far to stop or to be scared or to be intimidated. And you're talking about Bomet County. It is one of the counties that has been named with embezzlement of funds. How will you manage county funds? I will strictly follow the law. That's, that's all we need to do. Just follow the law because the laws are there on how you procure items. The laws are there on how you treat personnel, on how you even procure or even employ people. All those things are there. My opponent talks about being the father of devolution. But if you go to the ground and ask the people whether they feel that this father of devolution has actually brought and they feel the impact of devolution in Bomet, we need to do things in a different way. And the reason you saw in the Jubilee nominations, overwhelming, first of all, um, attendance. What is the message? They want change. I'm talking about Jubilee. Bomet County is seen as a jubilee zone, and your opponent has dismissed those claims. The, the problem now is no longer, it's because he went to NASA. If he had stayed in CCM and maybe, you know, tried to join with, the, with Jubilee, like the way Kano has done and the other, we would have had some problem. But he went kabisa to the opposition, Apana. You know. You as a can, <laughs> no, they can't agree to. When we see the deputy president, you know, um, who is our leader and has, has provided leadership in that region, um, and who is now heading to be, you know, going after we finish with the 2017 this year's election, uh, will be himself uh, offering himself for, for, for presidency in 2022. There is no way. There is no way you can tell us that we move to NASA, we take ourselves from being in government, and go and take our, our people 
to, to the opposition with the promise of, 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 a, of, a, of a seat, which first of all does not exist in the constitution. The deputy of the deputy of something or something. He's promised <laughs> to deliver more than one million votes to NASA. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, I wish him luck. I wish him luck. I don't know where those votes are going to come from. By the, I, from what I know from the people of Bomet, the people of Kericho, the people of Nandi, the people of Tugen, the people of Elgeyo Marakwet, and the people of Sabaot, I don't think that, that million, he knows himself where he's going to get it from. But it is not from those regions. And you spoke about Deputy President William Ruto, and it is claimed that in Rift Valley, if you don't sing to his tune, you can't survive. How will you come out of that shadow? How come you don't say the same about, uh, about Uhuru Kenyatta in, in, uh, in, in Central? Or about Raila Odinga in, in, uh, in, in Nyanza? Why is it that, you know, when it is said about William Ruto that he is the leader of, a, of, of the Kalenjin, you know, you have a problem with that, or people have a problem with that. I don't see, nobody is denying that there are other leaders, or that other leaders are, are going to emerge. Nobody is denying that. But we can only have one at a time. That's the message, really. Even this Isaac, if he just were patient enough, to, to, to wait his turn, I'm sure these, uh, the Kalenjin are very, are, very, are very accommodating people. They will give you your time when it is your time. But when they feel that you are out there and it seems like your motivation is to spoil for the one who is, uh, who is, uh, who is in the front, then, then, then that is wrong. You know, if but wants to say, sometimes they want to say, oh, you are the project of the, how can I be a project? I've, I've been on that ground for the last two years literally going to village to village, you know, campaigning. If, if I was a project it's not like that. If elected governor, would you work with Isaac Ruto? Why not? Why not? He's a, he's a, a leader and he's a, a leader from the area. I have no, no problems, uh, you know, working with him. Um, but the only thing I would not do is, um, uh, you know, uh, seek a lot of advice from him with respect to uh, running BOMET. A recent poll that was carried out by Ipsos, your opponent incumbent Isaac Ruto was leading with 38.9% and you're following closely with 37.7%. What happens if come August 9th, scenarios like that, you've lost? When you come into politics, um, it is a 50-50 chance. There's never, I mean, it's, it's either you get or you lose. There's no other in between, you know. Being number three or four or two or what is, is relevant, you know. You're either winning or you're losing. But that is highly unlikely. What we are looking at now is parties. We are no longer about the candidates that were in Jubilee and what. It's no longer about the candidate. It's about a fight now between Jubilee and NASA. And I know we are going to triumph. I know that I'm going to take this seat in Jesus' name.